Hello there, this is Dr. Shana Khan welcoming you to a presentation of homeopathic remedy Aconite Napulus. I think Aconite is a very important emergency remedy in homeopathy. Though it is not a deep active homeopathic medicine, but it is very useful in the acute life threatening conditions. That's why I think if it is kept as an emergency medicine in a family and is used in an emergency moment by consulting a homeopathic physician, then many lives can be saved. Aconite is more suitable for plethoric person. What do you understand by the word plethoric? Okay, the person who has excess volume of bloody fluid with red skin appearance, they are called plethoric person. Now we can discuss few important symptoms of aconite napulas. The first symptom you can think of aconite is fear. That fear is not a general fear, it is a life threatening fear and the terrible situation will be created suddenly, like an earthquake or a car accident. That means the first indicated symptom of aconite is sudden severe attack with fear of death. Its symptom won't be appear like bryonia or gelsemia medicine. We know that the bryonia and gelsemia symptoms appear gradually. For example, in fever condition, bryonia and gelsemia patients will say that in the morning they were feeling uneasiness. After that they felt feverish and finally in the noon or afternoon real fever has come. But in aconite and belladonna's fever will come suddenly with high temperature. That means aconite symptoms come suddenly with severe condition. So sudden onset is a major keynote symptom of aconite and belladonna medicines. Here we can differentiate between aconite and belladonna in febrile condition. Aconite and belladonna fever will appear suddenly and inflammation will be present in the fever. Aconite is used in continuous fever accompanied by anxiety and great restlessness with extreme thirst of cold water. The patient's body will be dry that means perspiration will be absent. But if perspiration ap appears, it will be quite cold. The face of the patient will be cold as ice. It can show red or pale. A peculiar symptom of aconite is one cheek red, the other cheek pale. In chamomilla has also this symptom. Belladonna's fever is usually intermittent or remittent type. It also starts suddenly like aconite and the body temperature rises to such an extent that if anybody touches of the body of the patient it seems that the hand will be burned. The patient's hand and feet are cold, sweating only in, in the covered parts, face is hot and red, patients want to sleep but awakes up during sleep. Head, eyes, face are hot and red colored and often severe headache is present. These are the symptoms of belladonna. However, we watch that in belladonna, lack of thrust, anxiety, and restlessness condition. On the other hand, aconite has excessive thrust, restlessness, and anxiety. The belladonna patient's pupil are more often dilated. Okay, restlessness uh, is an important keynote symptom of aconite nebulas. Dr. Nash emphasizes on three medicines for three types of restlessness. He said that aconite is mentally restlessness whereas rastrox is physically restlessness and arsenic is restless both mentally and physically. The third important keynote symptom of aconite is excessive thrust for large quantity of cold water. Kent said everything tastes bitter except water. There are few important similarities between aconite and arsenical medicines. Such as both have fear of death, anxiety, restlessness condition, extreme thrust, burning sensation, etc. But we can differentiate by careful observation. Such as 
Sometime aconite patient predicts the time of his death. Robin Murphy nicely represents in his book Keynotes of the Metre Medica that aconite is not a feeling that they are dying, but they are dying. He also said arsenic thinks they are going to die. Aconite thinks they are dying right now. Sometimes aconite patients say that, Doctor, there is no use. I am going to die. Okay, now we can discuss about thrust. Aconite and arsenic both have extreme thrust for cold water, but arsenic patient doesn't able to drink large quantities of, wa of water as much as aconite patient can drink. At a time, arsenic patient can drink too little water. Arsenic patient is silly, but during acute ailments, the head complaints are ameliorated by cold and in chronic conditions, the head, uh, the pains are often burning and ameliorated by heat. Fire-like burning pain of the affected part is an important symptom of arsenic help and peculiarity is that it ameliorated by heat. Aconite and arsenic both have burning sensation, but arsenic's burning relief by hot application and aconite's burning sensation relief by cold application. Arsenic patient is very fastidious, wants everything in order and very clean. Aconite is mentally restless, whereas arsenic is restless both mentally and physically. Sometimes arsenic patient doesn't able to represent physical restlessness because of weakness. They become weak very quickly after being sick. Causational use of aconite are complaints begin after a fright or from sudden shocking events. For example, anyone's ailment is started after seeing an accident, severe ailment after exposure to wind, especially dry cold wind, or ailment after staying extreme hot weather. By these effects, any organ can be affected severely, such as brain, lungs, liver, kidneys, etc. In every case of aconite, you have to regard that the symptoms will appear suddenly and it will be continuous. Some remedies have periodicity or waves, but aconite has no such a condition. Kent said the retention of the urine in the infant is so commonly an aconite condition that you will hardly ever need uh, to use any other medicine. Sometimes epismelifica is also needed for this condition. Kent also said, again it is true that in many cases of retention of the urine in the mother, it will disappear after a dose of posticum. For this condition, aconite, arsenic, hyoceamus, opium, pulsatilla, etc. are also important remedy. Kent said in his Materia Medica that aconite is a short-acting remedy, its symptoms do not last long. He also said there are no chronic diseases following it. On the other hand, George Vitulkas refers in his Materia Medica Viva, in the beginning years of my practice, I used aconite only for acute inflammatory conditions like everybody else in the homeopathic world because of the wrong assumption that aconite is indicated only in acute febrile conditions. It was only later that I discovered that it was also very useful for what could be called chronic conditions, especially chronic phobic or anxiety states. Since that time, we have been using it at the center of homeopathic medicine in Athens quite frequently for such chronic conditions with very good results. Thank you all for patiently watching the video. If you have any opinion or suggestion about the video, please let me know. You can also tell me in the comments box about which topic we can discuss in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe if you like the videos. Thank you and Allah Hafiz.